вопросов нет. Вопросов не вызывает. Ну, в любом случае мы ждем официального объявления победителя, да? Однозначно. This was um, Alexander Povetkin's last fight against um, Christian Hammer, or Hammer, however how you want to pronounce it. Um, it's February, excuse me, <laughs> January the 2nd, 2018, 9.23 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, Tea Street Controversy, this is Tea Street Controversy Live with Fight View 360. And now, Alexander Povetkin is the WBA mandatory for WBA Super World and IBF heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. How did this come about? Hey, listen, we're going to talk about it. This is what we're trying to figure out. So, Anthony Joshua, WBA Super World and IBF heavyweight champion, is supposed to be fighting Joseph Parker at the end of March um, or very, very early April. The fight is already done. You know, we're just waiting for the venue and, you know, for there to be an official announcement. But here's where, you know, I'm confused at is now... How for one, how did this how did this become a title eliminator to be the number one contender? But also looking at Alexander Povekin's resume, let's go take a look at it real quick. Please subscribe on the links to my social media are right here on the screen now and in the description box. He's 33 and 1 with 23 KOs. Here's his last few fights since he was supposed to fight Deontay Wilder in May of 2016. A fight in which Deontay Wilder was there, over there in Russia. And just one week before they were about to step in the ring, maybe give or take a day or so, um, news came out that Alexander Povetkin had failed the drug test. He was then suspended by the WBC, but yet there is still an investigation. Now, understand that Deontay Wilder, despite what some people may tell you, has still yet to receive his money for that fight. The money's in escrow, meaning that there's still litigation. There's still some legal shit going on. You see what I'm saying? So despite what people may have tell, may tell you, Deontay Wilder did not win. Yes, he won in a sense of, you know, Alexander Povetkin failed the drug test, but it's very complex and too complex to go over again in this video and and i've done tons of videos on this situation involving, uh, involving alexander povekin and uh deontay wilder in fact um i have the legal documents but none the, nonetheless if you look at the situation right okay he fought johan duapa a guy who deontay wilder um had defeated this was his fight after um, uh, being suspended by the WBC, meaning that he was stripped of his mandatory um, spot. And also, um, he wasn't ranked by any of the organizations, the WBC, WBA, WBO, and the IBF. So he fought Johan Duapa. He then, you know, fought, you know, um, about seven, you know, uh, months later, right? against Andre Rodinko, and this fight got him a ranking in the WBA for the WBA, as you can see, continental title and the WBO international title, but still he was unranked by the IBF and by the um, and by the WBC. Now, as we stand today, even though he is now the WBA mandatory for um, Anthony Joshua, you know, or the Joseph Parker winner, remember Anthony Joshua is the WBA Super World and IBF heavyweight champion. Joseph Parker is the WBO heavyweight champion. You have Manuel Char, who is the WBA world champion. So for those who don't know, and I know it's a lot of you who do, but this type of stuff has to be explained. In the sanctioning bodies, you have to fight somebody in the top 15 unless they're a mandatory. You know, for example, let's go look at... Um, uh, the rankings real quick you know you have to fight somebody who's the top 15 of the um you know of your uh sanctioning body now in the case of the wba they have two belts it's a weird ass situation you know but they have two belts by the way the wba rankings were just recently updated as of um a couple of days ago so this this is somewhat wrong alexander Povetkin is now number one over fresel quendo now you have Manuel Char, who's the WBA um, uh, world champion after defeating Alexander Ustinov. But as you notice, they have two titles. So you would ask yourself, well, wait a minute, since they have two titles, why don't why wouldn't Manuel Char be the mandatory, you know, for Anthony Joshua being though he has that world title and not Alexander Povetkin? The WBA is fucked up, ladies and gentlemen. That's the best way. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not going to try to. You know, bullshit around and mumbo jumbo you. They do whatever they want. 
Now, I have been an Alexander Povetkin supporter, and also I tried to stay on that line of making sure that I report the news and not, you know, talk about shit that don't even matter. So in my personal opinion, from what I've researched, he didn't do anything wrong involving the drug testing because he was busted for uh, um, he was busted for something that was newly banned and it wasn't enough scientific data to determine how long it takes for that chemical melodonium to get out your system. But like I said, that's going too far down the rabbit hole. The point I'm trying to make is the WBO pisses WBA pisses me off with shit like this is because I, 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 I how do you make this guy the mandatory despite what is what it what, what he has or has not done in a how how so if the winner of Joseph Park and then remember this is a unification for three belts you know as you can see right here let me zoom in a little bit more for you as you can see right here Joseph Parker has a WBO Anthony Joshua WBA in the IBF so the so there will be only one belt left which is that WBC right now if Anthony Joshua Joseph Parker win I mean if, if Anthony Joshua you know whoever wins between Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker would have to fight either Deontay Wilder or they would have to fight Alexander Povetkin and if they go to Ch and if they go their Alexander Povetkin fight and not fight Wilder, then the IBF is going to order their next mandatory. And the IBF mandatories are very important. And it could very well be Kubrat Pulev again, because Kubrat Pulev was supposed to fight Anthony Joshua, but was injured. And that mandatory spot was given to Carlos Takam. So on the on the heavyweight political landscape, this Alexander Povetkin being named WBA mandatory is a really, really, really big deal because not only if Anthony Joshua wins against Joseph Parker, he will be considered a more a, a credible opponent. But also people are going to be pissed off if Deontay Wilder if he doesn't fight Deontay Wilder. But in another video I'm going to do later on, we got to talk about how Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz is official. Well, it's not official. When a fight is official, right? Now, this is what now. Now, when you see on social media that a fight is official, a fight is never truly official until something called a press release comes out when the promoters announce that a fight is official. You know, so when you see people who have these amazing, amazing, amazing graphic design skills and they put the stuff on social media saying this fight is official for this date and this date. If you don't hear from the fighters, if you don't hear from the promoters or more so, if you don't hear that, see that press release, you know, that's published, that's released simultaneously to several, you know, well, not several um, hundreds you know, maybe thousands of media members and, and, and websites at the same time that, that tells the venue and when tickets are going to go on sale and and, and um, announcement for a press conference, then a fight is never official. I, I had a situation where some clown came on the channel when um when um the press release for from uh, Matchroom uh, Boxing, the press release for um David Hay versus versus Tony Bellew 2 or Bellew versus Hay 2 was released. He tried to accuse us of, let me show you what they look like, in matter of fact, in this door right here, here. Um, let me make sure there's no sensitive information. Yeah, this is what a press release looks like, right? I actually put this on, wait, no, I'll just show you on the website, duh. I actually um, just uploaded this earlier. No, not that. Not that. Not that either. I actually uploaded it earlier to show you basically what it means. So what we're waiting for, you know, for Josh, I mean, for um, Joshua versus Parker is basically a uh, press release to let you know, you know, like, OK, it's official because right now we know that it's supposed to be taking place on very early um, April or a date's been floating around is March the 24th. But we don't know, you know, the venue, you know, or their exact date yet. So you have people saying it's official, but yes, it may be a done deal, but it's not official. So this right here from, um, from, um, you know, uh, main events and, um, promoter is what's called a press release. And, you know, they're released from media to, um, upload. And basically, you know, it has like this type of stuff, you know, and it has like ticket information and, when they're going to go on sale and the network and all things like that, you know, so you may be hearing Joshua versus Park is official, but it's a done deal, but it's not official. But once again, it's just, you know, for one, Alexander Povetkin hasn't been looking too well. And a lot of people are not contributing at the age. They're saying shit like, well, yeah, now because he's off his roids. No, Russia has a very bad reputation for drug testing. As I say. You know, I think smarters, managers, promoters, boxers, trainers, everybody involved with a boxer 
who is the most important, should know that when you go to Russia, don't drink no motherfucking water, don't eat no meat, because we're not trying to hear that, you know, well, you went over there, you failed the drug test, and then everybody wants to blame it on the fucking contaminated meat or some fucking water. Don't drink nothing, don't eat nothing over there, period, you know? But Russia, you know, has this stigma of being, you know, um, known for fighters who fail drug tests. You know, now I'm not saying this is just the narrative that's going around, just like fighters that fight in Germany. Germany has a stigma of being of robbing fighters, just like Vegas. You know, these type of things happen, you know. Anyway, I don't want to uh, spend too much time on this. It's just we I'm trying to figure out like, you know, I would love to be able to interview the WBA president, Gilberto Mendoza. That's his name. And like try to figure out like, how do y'all, you know, pull this one over here all the way over here. You know, I would love to be able to interview them and be like, like, how do y'all just be, you know, you know, coming up with stuff like this? Like, even if you look at, you know, the comments on the tweet that they sent out, you know, this was uh, December the 15th, by the way. Pavekin is Anthony Joshua's number one challenge. Like, fans are not stupid. Absolute jokes. Genie Scumbag Pavekin is a new Teflon Don. Uh, what up, Gaddafi Joe? Mm -hmm. King Joffy Joe, my bad. You know? And as you can see, a lot of people are, you know, talking about, you know, um, you know, the 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 steroids thing. Pulev was mandatory challenger for the IBF title. But basically, you know, I'm just trying to figure out, like, where did they get, like, where, well, how? You know, how? I don't know, man. That's him right here. That's the WBA president. Roberto Mendoza. <laughs> You know, so anyway, whatever the case may be, I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. All the links to my social media are right here flashing on the screen now every, what, fucking 15 seconds or so. Please subscribe.